Hey, this is Brian Mosley and Captain Paul from Sail Time Boston and First Reef Sailing School. And today we're going to be talking about a really exciting opportunity, our deliveries south. So myself, been a Sail Time member for 10 years now, and I have never done a delivery. I consider myself a coastal cruiser. I've done some cruising in, uh, in like Central Europe and Croatia, but I've never really gone offshore. So I asked my good friend, Captain Paul here to explain some of the ins and outs of offshore deliveries to give you a little more heads up on how to accelerate your sailing career past the coastal cruising point. Uh, Captain Paul, thanks for being with us. Totally. So we, you're leaving in a couple of days, Paul, we're going to, we're going to miss you. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about your trip south to the Virgin Islands. Now, when I typically talk to people about this trip, they say, oh, you're going from Boston to, you know, New York, past Annapolis, down to Charleston, South Carolina, to Florida, and then directly to the Virgin Islands. That's how the crow flies. That's how people get there on airplanes. But it doesn't seem like that's the path you have here on the screen, Paul. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, why we don't go through Florida and why we go through the path you, uh, you're showing here in Windy? Yeah, totally. I think um, so when you tell people, hey, we're gearing up to bring our fleet down to the Caribbean and more specifically, uh, we're based out of St. Thomas, the United States Virgin Islands, and we cruise in the beautiful British Virgin Islands. Everybody thinks you head down towards Florida and a few hours later you're there. But uh, this map will kind of show you that if you look at New England and you look at the whole east coast of the United States and the southern tip of Florida, there's a really big gap between the southern tip of Florida and where San Juan, Puerto Rico is sort of in the middle and bottom of my screen. So the uh, the route to get to the United States Virgin Islands is a little bit different than what a lot of people think, and it requires being offshore or in blue water. So on my screen, we've got two major legs here of our route. First, we've got Boston to Bermuda. Bermuda is right in the center of my screen there. That's about uh, 730 regular miles or 650 nautical miles. And then leg number two goes from Bermuda straight due south on what we call Highway 65, basically riding along the 65th meridian um, in, in longitude and uh, right down to uh, kind of just off the coast of San Juan and St. Thomas. And so we break this up into two different legs. Bermuda serves as a really wonderful place to visit, to refuel and reprovision. And in many cases, we, we say goodbye to some of our crew members and they fly home. And then uh, in comes some of our new relief crew and they join us for the second leg. So we, we love Bermuda, we love stopping in there. And there have been times where we've just passed right by, but you can see it's, it's almost a halfway point getting from Boston down to the Virgins. So, Paul, how long does it take to get from, from Boston down to the Virgins? The first leg is a little shorter, Brian, and the big concern is uh, what we call the Gulf Stream. The most people know the Gulf Stream is an offshore river that travels from the Gulf of Mexico, very close to Florida, along the East Coast, passes New England where it dips out to sea and crosses over towards our friends in the UK. And in the first leg from Boston to Bermuda is about uh, five days, depending on what kind of boat. And we're going to be typically on in cr larger cruising sailboats, anywhere from the 40-foot the to 50-foot range. It's about a five-day trip. Cool. And then what about the second leg? The second leg, it all gets a little warmer and it takes typically about seven days. So we, we say goodbye to Bermuda and we uh, point the bow south and about seven days later, we're, uh, we're in the beautiful trade winds. And speaking of the trade winds, uh, many people who have sailed in the, the Virgin Islands, if you look at the bottom of my screen here, I'm trying to highlight it the best I can, right on top of San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, and, and over in these, these windward and what they also call the leeward islands, the, the wind direction is, is coming from the east blowing towards the west. Those are the trades and those are the winds that make sailing in the Virgin Islands so special, so consistent, always from the east in a similar speed. And those trade winds are, are kind of entered into several hundred miles north of the, the Virgin Islands, which make the end of the second leg a really pleasurable last few days as you arrive on the shores of the Virgin Islands. Nice. Well, Paul, I'm a, I'm a busy business professional and, uh, you know, you, you said it would take about five days for the first leg and seven days for the second leg. That's a, it's almost two weeks. Um, it's a lot of time. Do I have to be out there for the entire two weeks? No, we split it up into two legs, like I mentioned earlier, just for that reason. So there are some folks that like a little bit of, of, of adventure and in, in the, the month of November, often the first leg is a little chillier, but we wear our Fowleys and we put on our winter gloves and hats and so forth. And it's actually quite a fun trip. Uh, we, we drop folks off. If they'd like to stay on the second leg, they're more than welcome to. We spend typically a day to two or three days in Bermuda to enjoy the culture and check out the food and, and the drink. And then the second leg starts and oftentimes folks will fly in just for the second leg, which is totally fine. 
Awesome. Very cool. And for this year specifically, for the the, the fall of uh, 2024, um, what boats will you be taking down and which boat will you be captaining? Mm -hmm. We've got two boats in our fleet this year. Uh, the first is a 2024 Fountain Peugeot Isla 40 Catamaran. That boat will be uh, captained by myself. And then following us, several miles behind, of course, <laughs> will be our beautiful 2022 Beneteau Oceanus 40.1, which clocks in at a little over 42 feet length overall. And both boats are really well equipped. We provide all the safety equipment, um, including our, our life rafts, jack lines, tethers. And we do have a, a list that we uh, we ask that folks that are joining us go out and, and outfit themselves with. Cool. So so if I wanted to, I could fly from Boston, land right in the right land in Bermuda, kind of skip the whole first leg and just jump to the second. That's uh, That sounds good. I, I think I'll do that. So uh, what's your experience with this delivery? Like how many times have, have you personally done the trips, you know, down and back? Oh, goodness. Well, uh, I was just lamenting this is going to be my 13th consecutive season down in the United States Virgin Islands. And uh, almost every one of those years, I've made the, the two and the from trip. So just shy of 13, I have uh, skipped the last two years, I think, as I've been uh, back here at the desk and, and doing some of the weather routing that you see on our screen, making sure that our captains who are offshore have got some guidance and an eye in the sky. But I'm very excited to get back out there this season. And um, I think the thing that I enjoy most about being offshore um, is that uh, you've got some really amazing time to reflect and to think about sailing and, and what the sport means to you. And um, eventually you get to Bermuda, which is a really cool culture. And not long after that, we're down in the Virgin Islands. And it always makes me laugh to think that we've got these two beautiful vessels that uh, spend their summer sailing around Boston Harbor with the skyline and, and all of the uh, the urban sailing that they do. And, and in just a short two weeks, they're down in the tropics in turquoise waters surrounded by turtles and palm trees. And it's it's the same exact boat. And how did it get there? Well, we, we put the sails up and the wind blew us there, which is always kind of tickling to me. Love it. So, uh, man, a decade of experience. That's cool. So last question, you know, I've, I've done a fair amount of sailing in the Virgin Islands and I've never done an, an offshore delivery. What are some of the biggest differences between pleasure cruising around Yost Van Dyke and going to Willie T's and Bitter End Yacht Club compared to the, the uh, you know, spending a week on blue water? Well, blue water sailing is... Um... You know, a lot of people ask, do you, do you stop during the night? No, there's nowhere to stop. We're in thousands and thousands of feet of water. And we split up into to watch teams. So, for example, Brian, if we were on the boat together, you and I might be on a watch team. We might have two other folks or four other folks or or more depending on the size of the boat and we rotate we spend two hours on duty and then several hours off duty the watch schedules are dictated by how many total crew members we have the more crew members the more time off and what do you do in that time off well brian you sleep you uh, you eat food you relax you read a book and then when it's your turn to be back on duty it's mission critical you keep your eyes on the road and what are we looking for anything that could be out in front of us uh, could be weather could be ships um, the Bermuda is a, is a very popular place for ships to pass by as they make their way towards our east coast of the United States. So the, uh, the, the, the role of the crew members and those who join us on these trips is to keep a, a vigilant eye. And if there are weather changes or anything that, that feels off in the boat, be it me mechanical issues or engine problems or something related to the sails, it's their duty to notify the captain to, to wake me up if I'm napping so we can deal with the problem. So they, they play an important role. But the good news is there's really no rocks out there and uh, nothing to bump into other than other ships. I love it. All right, final question, because uh, I know my mom's going to ask. Uh, you mentioned Bermuda. Is this close to the Bermuda Triangle, and I'm any sort of <laughs> danger right before Thanksgiving? No, and there's no orcas to my knowledge on this path, Brian, but um, no, we're, we're skimming just along the edge of the Bermuda Triangle. That connects uh, the southern tip of Florida with uh, with Bermuda and uh, over towards kind of the Bahamas and, uh, you know, San Juan area, I guess, kind of it, this whole big triangle. And uh, note, we're, uh, we're going to stay well outside of it. So you can tell uh, Mama Mo's that everything will be fine. Sounds good. Well, Paul, thanks for taking the time. If you're interested in attending one of these blue water delivery passages or mile building passages, you can go to firstreefsailing.com and check it out on our website. Until then, we'll, uh, we hope to see you with us on the sailboat.